Useful design ideas, steam blowers, what are they and why are they required? The answer to this question is not quite as simple as it seems. For a boiler like this, which is either methylated spirit or gas fired, you don't need a steam blower. The chimney carries away the heat. As the heat from the burner goes up the chimney, this causes more air to be pulled in over the burner underneath. And because of the air flow, the fire burns brightly. In this clip I labelled most of the parts of the steam plant, but not the blower because there isn't one. This is a Castle Steam V6 vertical fire tube boiler. Quite unlike the Stuart 504 type, which is just a pot boiler with tubes slung underneath, which are water tubes. However, a Castle Steam V6 boiler does have a steam blower, which is a short pipe that goes up the chimney, and you can admit steam to this pipe, which draws the fire. The next few clips show me actually running a Castle Steam V6 boiler. If you are using charcoal soaked in white spirit or paraffin, make sure that you don't throw a lot of paraffin into the firebox with the charcoal. Here's a health and safety warning, under no circumstances must you use petrol or anything like that. I lit the final shovel full of charcoal before putting it in the firebox, and this lights the rest of the charcoal in there. Normally on a model steam boiler of this size, I would use a blower on the chimney. Well, it's really a sucker, and it's used to draw the fire. But there's just about enough draft with the long chimney on the V6 boiler. But unfortunately, if I shut the fire hole door, the fire goes out. And moving the air bleed makes no difference. As you can see, there is no flame anymore inside the firebox. Until, of course, I relight the fire. The only problem is, it's actually a breezy day today. There's not a gale blowing, which makes a change. But the wind across the top of the chimney makes the chimney not draw as well as it should do. Eventually though it settles down and I found that if I nearly shut the fire hole door like this, it was acceptable. In this clip you can clearly see the smoke coming out of the chimney. There's no blower turned on, this is just the natural draft of the piece of tubing. This principle works fine with a vertical boiler, even in miniature sizes, but it does not work with small horizontal boilers such as you would find in a miniature steam locomotive. In a full-size steam locomotive boiler there is some natural draft to draw the fire, so you do not need to fit an auxiliary blower. I'm adding some coal into the firebox on top of the charcoal via the fire hole door. The design of this boiler is really good. For instance, the firebox crown is quite a long way above the top of the fire hole door and as well as some other internal innovative designs, this boiler allows for a really good depth of fire. And once this coal is all alight, then the steam will be raised very quickly. It's always a good idea with a miniature steam boiler to initially raise the steam slowly. That's because all of the metal that's in the boiler expands quite slowly, not all at once. As soon as some pressure showed on the pressure gauge, I open the blower, which blows a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. Now I'm closing it to almost close because I don't want that much blast. This is the speed of steam generation with a Castle Steam V6 boiler. Time to open the steam valve to the pump. And here it is, sizzling nicely and pumping water into the boiler. In this clip I'm shoveling the wood into the firebox and at this point I really wish the shovel was longer. After I'd put quite a lot of this kindling wood into the firebox, the last piece on the shovel I lit, and that set the whole thing alight. Normally I would use an electric blower or exhaust fan when starting a fire in a steam engine, but instead I fitted the extension chimney to increase the drafting. And after about half an hour, after I fed in some coal, there was a very small amount of steam in the boiler. Nothing showing on the pressure gauge, and not enough to blow the whistle. After another 20 minutes or so, you can see that there's an increase in pressure. It's very slow though. This is my old blower with the modified base that I use to raise steam. And this small tap between the cylinder block and the chimney is the steam blower. As you can see in here very clearly, this engine runs beautifully. The birds in the garden are louder than the engine. I've shown how it's possible to start the traction engine's fire by using the extension chimney, 
but with a small locomotive you would generally use an electric blower like this one. The exhaust fan on the electric blower causes a vacuum in the smoke box and pulls air through the fire. These electric blowers do need to be used until there's sufficient steam in the boiler to make the steam blower work, then you can remove the exhaust fan. And that was Jonathan, my lovely assistant, rushing into the shot to remove the blower from the chimney. And I've now opened the steam blower, and in no time at all, it's blowing off, I can't believe it. And mad as it sounds, I'm putting more coal on the fire and leaving the fire hole door open in an attempt to stop the safety valve from blowing off, but all to no avail. It's worth remembering, of course, that this engine is not running under load. When a steam engine is working hard and pulling weight, the blast up the chimney really draws the fire. Most locomotives have a hollow stay that runs through the boiler, and in this clip you can see the blower valve connects to this. However, this is not always the case. On this Sweet William engine, the blower is external. Here you can see the general layout, the thin pipe that runs from the smoke box to the fitting near the back, near the cab, is the blower pipe. It may need some sort of support, but I think it should be OK. Finally, a word of caution. It's essential that when you stop the engine in the station, especially if it is a full-size or larger locomotive, as you close the regulator, you must open the blower slightly, because otherwise you can get a severe explosive blowback from the fire hole as unburnt gases ignite. From what I've been told, this is especially important on a full-size engine. When forgetting to open the blower in the station, I burnt my fingers several times, even on the miniature ones. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.